Hello and welcome back to another Impact Lounge Impact Review. I'm your host today, Adam, joined as always by the mighty Ro. Good afternoon, Ro. Hey, how's it going, Adam? Really good over here in the UK. It's uh, completely white, snow snowbound we are, snowbound. Anyway, uh, yeah, we're here this week. Uh, once again, BQ can't make it, but we're here to fill in for the faithful who listen. And if this is your first time listening, do make sure to hit subscribe if you're listening on YouTube or whatever method it is, whether it's Podbean, whatever. Hit subscribe, like, whatever it is to make sure you get future episodes. So you've got quite a lot coming up this week and there's a lot of content on the channel that you may have missed before. Including uh, this Tuesday, I'm going to be talking to KM. Uh, we've got an exclusive interview with him. So hopefully uh, you'll stick around and come back and listen to that one as well. Uh, but as always, before we start, we usually give a shout out to other guys out there who are doing good work uh, and spreading the good impact name. So uh, I just really wanted to, to highlight the Heelcast, who are uh, some guys doing some great work out there. Every week they do an impact review show as well. If you listen to one podcast, listen to this one. But if you have time for two, give those guys a check out as well. Uh, and also Andre Corbeil, uh, who we, we said last week, mentioned about, he's also always very pro uh, impact and you can follow him on Twitter. What's that handle again, Ro? I always forget it. So this is this is your chance to shine on the Twitter handle. <laughs> it's a uh, Andre Corbeil. I want to say it's a uh, A N D R E underscore C O R B E I L. Um, also, if that's not correct, you can always um, if you follow BQ, just look under his uh, followers and uh, he's under there. He, he shouldn't be hard to find, but great follow. Anyway, before we start the show tonight, thanks for all the comments from last week. Um, it was nice uh, to get a shout out for the two of us, uh, doing our best here in BQ's absence. And uh, yeah, this week, um, let's, let's kick off with the show then. Obviously, a lot to talk about, including the new relationship. Uh, well, the impact have got the new channel on Twitch, which is where the main event aired. Uh, but we'll come on to that later, I'm sure. So what do you think overall this for this week, Ro? Um, you know what? It seemed it was a good show, but I kind of walked it away from it seemed like it was just two big matches as, and then as well as an angle. And then you had a lot of filler. So and that's not to say the show was bad, but I feel like for the two matches that were heavily promoted, they delivered. Yeah, absolutely. I and mean, we'll come on to, to the, the, the matches in a minute. But, uh, yeah, I found as well that there was a big segment in the middle where it just seemed to be recap packages over and over and i think there was three of them back to back and it kind of took me out of the show but but we'll come on to that when we when we run through Let, let's uh did you enjoy the show though overall though oh yeah yeah definitely i i thought it was excellent and the matches themselves were great but let's start off with the opener the uh, x division championship with uh, ishimori and xavier uh i can't believe i'm going to ask you what you thought of this because it's bound to be a good reaction because this was a cracker wasn't it yeah, it was great. Um, the the only thing I thought, I thought maybe the placement on the card, you know, with this being, you know, one of the matches that they heavily promoted, I thought maybe they could have put this somewhere, you know, maybe two matches before the actual main event. So, so I kind of, that, that was my thing, but no, great. And um, my biggest takeaway was, you know, I give these guys a long feud for the title. <laughs> you got some great uh, television on your hands. Do you know, I, I don't always particularly like two faces having a match, uh, but this kind of worked. Uh, I, I really like their, their, their match-up, the styles worked well together. Even, you know, at the end, you know, they were, were they teasing a, a heel turn, you know, where he raised his arm, was he going to pull him back and turn heel? I'm glad they didn't go that way. I think it would have been a mistake to turn either of them heel because these guys have, you know, really can carry the division for a long time. The one thing I did want to bring out, oh, a couple of things about this match I wanted your opinion on, but the one thing that I thought has been better than it has for weeks, and it's something I've moaned about, is I thought the commentary was really good during this match and overall throughout the show. I thought the commentary was excellent tonight. You know, for this match, I didn't catch it too much because I was just so uh, lasered in to, as far as the match. Because um, the thing that I think will works for both uh, Xavier and Ishimori is they're kind of building up a history. And if you remember at the uh, when they face each other in the Super X Cup, you know, the way that that match went down was you had Ishimori hit the 450 splash only for Xavier to kick out. And then Xavier ends up getting the win. And then in this one, we see Xavier hit the final flash on Ishimori only for Ishimori to kick out. So I like that, you know, they 
played off of something that happened in the past, you know, that um, co- considering, you know, the participants involved. So um, I thought that was great. But, yeah, the commentary, I didn't catch it too much because I was just too involved into the match. Just on that finish, the, the one thing I, I really like about Ishimori's finisher, the 450 splash, is that there's, there's some guys who do things, uh, you know, flippy moves. Uh, and, and Xavier's a, a, a good example of someone who does a lot of, you know, lots of rotations, 720, you know, with midairs and these kind of things. But the one of first, and sometimes they don't look like they actually hurt any more than if you just jumped off normally, you know, and didn't do any spins. But Ishimori's 450 actually looks like a really hard hitting move. Uh, and there's not many people who can do it as well as he can. I, I was really impressed with the finish on that one. Yeah, he does a very clean. Um, I mean, I there. I don't know if you're familiar with um, his. Uh, I think his name was Justin Gabriel. I don't know what he goes by now, but I know. And not to say his 450 sloppy, but I know with his. Uh, I I don't know if he would bounce off of them or something, but every time he would uh, do it, he'd always be uh, holding onto his stomach. <laughs> <laughs> I think quite a lot of them who use the frog splash uh, have done that over the years, don't they? they? It hurts them more, but Ishimori just looks like a, a, a heavy guy who comes down on you. And someone who's in the X Division, that, that's surprising, but it does look like a, a you know, really impactful f- finisher. The, one other thing that, that uh, I was going to say, one criticism, it's not really a criticism, it's just an observation. But the way that Desmond Xavier uh, sets up his suicide dives or his jumps over the top rope, Always seems to bother me. I, I don't know why. He runs with his arms at his side. And it reminds me of Barry Goldberg from the Goldbergs. Have you ever seen that program, how he runs? But it, it always, as soon as I see it, it takes me out of the moment. But I do have to give a shout out to the one uh, dive that he did over the barriers. Uh, that was possibly the move of the night for me. You know, what I fear, and not just with him, but with a lot of the guys that, you know, dive out of the ring is it seems like there's not a lot of space between them and the rails. So one of my biggest fears is maybe you get a guy who over jumps or gal who over jumps and actually ends up hitting the rail, you know, and that's something I kind of wish that they were able to push the railing a little back further. That way you avoid avoid that because you got to time that jump just right where you got enough space where you're landing on your opponent, but then, you know, not hitting the rails or, you know, fan or whatever the case may be. But uh, I know what you're talking about, but that one that one dive, man, that was crazy. And it ended up um, not busting him up, but uh, he had he had a little cut Ishimori did on his head. Yeah. I, I, and the other thing I, I found funny is when they went to the replay, uh Josh Matthews saying that he must have dived 20 feet <laughs> in the air. Which, <laughs> uh, okay, okay, Josh, I believe you. But it, it was a fantastic spot. And, and overall, it was one of the, the, the best X Division matches I can remember in a long time. And uh, well played the two of them. And do you know what? Although I don't know if the feud's going to carry on, I'm sure it will come back at some point. But uh, I, I thought it was a really excellent match. And uh, Ishimori, for a guy who doesn't talk, he can really tell a story in that ring. So. Uh, I hope he sticks around. I hope it's not just a, a short-term thing, you know, this this uh, link up with Noah. I hope it carries on and, and he sticks around even if uh, the, the relationship doesn't. So um, after that, we had a bit of a, a recap between LAX and OVE. Nothing really new here. I mean, Impact have always done good video packages. Um, and certainly the one at the, the end of the previous week, building up the, the barbed wire massacre w- w- was excellent. But... There was nothing new in this for me. It just seemed like filler. Yeah, that and that's what we've seen in between a lot of uh, the matches on this episode. It, it seemed like you had, you know, the X Division match that was heavily promoted and as well as the Barbed Wire Massacre. And then in between, you had a lot of video packages, mainly uh, pumping up the, uh, the Barbed Wire Massacre and the LAX OVE feud. Now, I've just figured out why I said it seemed like there was about half an hour of recaps. Uh, I'm looking through the results here as we do this show, and uh, there was something missed out from the UK taping, and it was the same the week before as well. Uh, they haven't been showing the, the, you know, the flashbacks. So in the US, you had the Dan Lambert bit next after the OVE bit, followed by Eddie Edwards versus Aaron X, Rex, which didn't happen in the UK one, which is why it seems so at odds that we had about five recap promos altogether. So, uh, yeah, once again, the ATT stuff. And I know that uh, BQ did a, a podcast special. I think it might have been uploaded this morning saying that it looks like that's going to be dropped, which is a bit of a shame. 
Well, you know what? I thought once the new regime came in, it seemed just my opinion that they pulled the plug on it because as I stated, you know, with you as well as I told BQ, you know, it's not so much that they were a problem, but who was getting over in all of it? Like we thought them adding KM, all right, well, somebody's getting some kind of rub, but now with them dropping it, apparently he's not. And really the two people that were facing each other were Moose, Moose and um, Lashley and Lashley dominated Moose. Then, you know, you bring in Storm and I mean, for me, I don't know, I'm, I'm just speaking for myself, to have Storm go out and that be the guy that ends it and then for him not to stick around as far as Lambert, it just it, that left a bad taste in my mouth. I I think with Storm, you know, being a long uh TNA guy when it was going by TNA, I mean, it, you could have given anyone on that roster that rub and to give it to, you know, someone who's a non-wrestler, then let alone somebody who's not going to be around just kind of a bad taste, but I mean, it is what it is. I, I know where you're coming from. I, I, I think, obviously, the, the intended rub is it was to be for KM, being the one who was the orchestrator of that and uh, leading to a rub to him. But, you know, uh, if the rumours from Mr. Meltzer are true and uh, this has just been dropped out of nowhere, it'd be a real shame. I, I hope they do come up with some explanation of, of why it's finished, because I'd like to see Dan Lambert stick around. You know, I don't know if he's got any desire to stick around, but I think uh, BQ said on, on his uh, uh, podcast this morning that uh, he would love to see Dan Lambert on commentary. And, and, and I agree. I, I think he would be fantastic on commentary. He, he's almost, he reminds me of Bobby the Brain, almost, a little bit. I, I don't know if you see the similarities at all. Not so much Bobby the Brain, but I'm in agreement as far as having him on commentary. But like I said, for them just to pull the plug like like that, I'm just guessing that with the new regime, they probably figured, hey, we're, we're done with this because it's been running on so long. And as they showed the video package, you look at their dominance and it's like, dang, like, <laughs> has, you know, Moose or, you know, anyone else involved ever got one up over them? So, but yeah, I, I love to keep them around or even as a manager. I mean, I don't know who you, you I guess you get him to manage KM. But, uh, yeah, it just kind of just seemed like they just – the new regime was like, hey, we're done with this and just pulled the plug on it. Yeah. So we'll see where that goes. And, uh, obviously, we've got one more show before the new set of tapings, which is next week. So hopefully there'll be there'll be some clue next week in the show as to, to what's happening in America's top team. And, and we'll see where we guess we go from there. So, as I said, uh, in the U.K., we didn't have the, the Global Wrestling Network flashback moment of the week of Eddie, Eras, Eddie Edwards and Aaron Rex. So uh, – I can only leave it to you to comment on this one. What was this like? What was it like seeing it? Was it just more filler? Uh, yeah, I um, I fast forwarded it. And, you know, as, as far as with this match, as well as a lot of the, you know, the video packages, I just fast forwarded, it, you know, because it, it did come across as filler. But uh, the, this match, I don't know if you remember, I want to say this took place at Bound for Glory. I want to say, is it, yeah, 2016. And um, this is when they cr did the inaugural grand champion with Aaron Rex and EC3. Um, they should have put the belt. I mean, not EC3. I'm sorry. Um, Eddie Edwards. They, yeah, they should have put the belt on Eddie Edwards. Um, Aaron Rex, I, I thought, was a prime example of, you know, a guy who comes over. And, you know, we thought he was bigger than maybe his former employer did. So we thought him coming to Impact, getting the opportunity, he was just going to be this big star. And it just, it never clicked. And I'm not going to put all the blame on him. Maybe, you know, having him as a first champion, the grand champion, or, you know, creative, whatever, you know, did, didn't do, uh, you know, a good job with him or whatever the case may be. Um, but he just never really got over that well. It, it just, it just didn't, it just didn't click. So, I mean, if you're interested, I'm sure they have this match on the, global wrestling network but um yeah it, it's it was whatever to me it, it's an odd one with aaron uh, aaron i should say i say aaron that's very british of me isn't it uh aaron rex uh in that i thought he was fantastic when he was damien sandow in, in the wwe and he was one of the few things that i did like about wwe at the time and i even liked his opening promo when he came out and he did a bit of a shoot promo i thought this is going to be interesting and as you're right he just never clicked and i don't know if it's because he was given free reign to do what he wanted but he just came in and seemed like a bland wrestler. And only at the end, when he started his Liberace kind of gimmick, at least that was interesting. And it was a shame that, for whatever reason, I don't know, did he just fall out of love with the business? 
Does he still wrestle? I, don't, I really don't know much about him anymore. It's a shame that he kind of disappeared and, and he could have been something good because he's obviously got a lot of charisma because he got over with terrible gimmicks in, in, in WWE. So, uh, oh well. Uh, no real loss, to be honest. But uh, it's a shame that they didn't make more of him when they had him. OK, so, as I said, the UK broadcast missed that out and then we went to a recap of EC3 and Matt uh, Sadal and then uh, not really going to... To, to mention much because this was stuff from last week where they said you know next week it's going to be no rounds or judges it's just going to be a straight up match so uh, this what I mean if you look in the dictionary for filler that they would just have this promo and recap uh, I mean there's nothing else to say about it next up more recap work uh, this time we had Laurel Van Ness and Ali and mainly Ali's journey more than Laurel Van Ness's so I thought they did a pretty good job here uh, any thoughts I thought my only thing was when when and I like if you notice now when Ali's promos like she's really seeming more serious now, which is good. But what she was bringing up and I don't know if any other fans caught this. If you did leave it in the comments, she was bringing up her feud with Laurel Van Ness. But it was when Laurel Van Ness before she turned into the Bridezilla. So they were talking about, you know, as far as, you know, Laurel made me do this or, you know, whatever else she was talking about. It was when Laurel had that rich girl gimmick. So I just kind of just thought it was funny. It was like, you know, your feud with Laurel, you know, really just started up now since you've been chasing after the title. But you're bringing up, you know, her, her and her past state. Not that it's a big deal, but, hey, I'm I'm all for them uh, trying to have any kind of resemblance of some continuity with uh, wrestlers. So um, I'm fine with it. I know what you're saying. It's basically a selective uh, memory, isn't it? That she, she had no problem being her slave when she wasn't the champion. But now that she's champion, oh, because I was a slave, I won the championship belt. You're right. It doesn't make much sense. Uh, just going back to, to, to the LAX thing, the other thing, just as we're talking about recaps of things, uh, I'd completely forgotten that Diamante was in LAX <laughs> until I saw the recap package. And as we're talking about the knockouts, I wonder if she'll ever be back or if they've ever addressed where she is. Um, but, uh, yeah, um, I think she's recovering from from injury, if I'm not mistaken, because, yeah, um, damn, I mean, you know, I apologize for not remembering the actual event, but there was one one uh, pay-per-view. It might have been Slammiversary. I'm not sure, but she had did a, some type of uh, I want I don't know if it was a Rana or, or a big boot or something, and she messed her knee up. Yeah, I, I do remember that. Uh, I do remember when it happened, and I remember the injury. But it, it, I always find it strange when it's someone recovering from surgery like that. They don't have to wrestle. They could still be part of the group and appear in promos. But I'm guessing it's a, a cost-cutting exercise, so uh, never mind. Anyway, uh, yeah, sorry, I went off track there. Well, obviously, we're talking about Ali. Yeah, I, I've been saying for weeks that Ali needs to get a bit more serious, a bit less of the, the frowning face. And, and it's good that they're going full steam ahead with a, a bit more serious Ali. Uh, uh, and although we didn't see a match with her this week, um, obviously, yeah, it's building, building to the title match whenever it comes. Is it next week? I can't remember, is it? Oh, no, it can't be. It must be at the new tapings, isn't it? You know, it yeah, I, was so, I was so confused because um, a lot of the matches that I thought were going to be on this card, it seemed to with this show that they were advertising uh, next week's show. And then let alone next week's show, which is supposed to be Genesis, is supposed to be this big show. I kind of wish... Um, they promoted it a little bit more, but then I understand, you know, this past week it was all about promoting the barbed wire massacre. So up next, we had Park and Park against Kong and the Princess. Uh, typical big man squash match. Um, but I quite like this this story. I know it's a silly mid card story and. You know, I'm a sucker for these kind of things. I used to like the Grado and Park stuff. So, you know, I, I, I don't know if it's if it's just me or like rubbish storylines, but this, this is fine. And the segment where uh, Chandler was punching Congo Kong and having no effect was quite funny. And I laughed way more than I should have, if I'm being honest. Um, but once again, that, that says more about me than the actual match itself. Have you got any thoughts on this one? Um, it was harmless. I mean, I guess you can say this is filler too. Um, I like the pairing of Jimmy Jacobs with Congo Kong, but I would like to see them do something with Congo Kong. The one thing that we haven't had, especially in the main event scene for some time, is kind of like that that dominant giant. And I think with the main event scene right now, just being you know Eli Drake, of course, who's the champion, uh, El Patron, and uh, 
I was about to say Nitro, Johnny Impact. I'm sorry. Um, adding him to the mix, you know, that give you, give you something new. So, so yeah. And then as far as with Chandler Park, um, I think we might see another alley situation with him where, you know, we get a, a person who's quote unquote inexperienced and then, you know, a year from now, he's, you know, a different character. So, yeah, I mean, fine. It just feels like it's the Grado storyline all over again, isn't it? Where he's representing a poor wrestler. Uh, I know this is obviously his nephew is it, or brother or whatever it may be. I can't remember the exact relationship between the two parks, uh, allegedly. But it, it seems played out before. And um, I, I, I don't know. I, the problem that I have is when a new wrestler like Park comes in, he's obviously a talented guy. It's Ethan Page, isn't it? I think his real name. Uh, he's yeah. obviously a talented guy on the indies and these kind of things. And, and they come in and they make him look so comical. I, I just wish that they'd have made him look at least a bit more competitive because... He's just like Joseph Park at this point, isn't he? In that he can't wrestle, he can't do anything. You know, if he was a real person, he would look better than he did in this match, if you know what I mean. It looks like he's throwing, you know, comedy punches almost. And although it made me laugh, and I'm going against what I said a few moments ago, I think that if you're going to build a wrestler like that, you can't have him so comical. Uh, you've got to give him some kind of realism in there. You can still keep it funny, but... I don't know. Uh, for me, it, it was it was filler. And, and the annoying thing about it is that, you know, this whole show was pretty much filler building up to Barbara Wire Massacre. And they could have done so much in the time that they had to progress this storyline, a backstage segment, because it, it seemed a bit random them coming out to this match. I know they built it the week before, but, you know, they could have had a talking segment before this one just to build it up, make us care. And, and to me, I didn't care about this match at all, you know, the outcome of it. But anyway, onwards and upwards. So... We're on to the spaghetti ropes. What am I talking about? Yes, the Impact Global Championship match from, uh, was it Border City or Detroit City Wrestling? I can't remember where it was. But uh, the ropes, that, I'm going to just start with that. I'm going to go straight in there. So off-putting, wasn't it? it? It was like they had elastic bands of ropes. It, 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 once again, I, I don't know what was going on here. Um, but I enjoyed the match. I enjoyed the match. Um, I thought there were some good spots in it. I think Johnny Impact's wrestling at times looks quite weak, the impact of him. He did this one leg spinny thing, which just looked like it, it didn't do any damage at all. Um, so for me, the wrestling was generally very good. I thought Eli Drake looked good in this, which is the first time in a long time. But overall... Uh, I was just taken completely out of it because it looked like a, a ring that was made in someone's backyard. Yeah, I, I was taken out. Take, <clears throat> excuse me, I was taken out of the match as well. Um, the ropes, that was the thing that really got me. I'm like, it looked so unsafe. And then I don't know if it was the lighting or it just, you know, for the caliber of players involved in this particular match, and we know what's at stake. It just, it didn't seem like a, a big deal. And then it was too much comedy for me. You know, you have a ref. I mean, when do you ever see in a match a ref be so involved in a match as far as, you know, hey, you're not going to do this to me. And, you know, and then they both, they do the uh, super kick spot. You know, I, I just thought that, that was just kind of silly. And then, you know, just to throw the match out. I mean, it, it, I'm at the point now, as much as I love Eli, I'm ready for him to drop the title and then get another run. That way, under the new regime, you know, maybe they can push him as champion a bit better than this previous one did. Because, it, it you know, we see with his matches, it's like every, <clears throat> excuse me, everyone, he's winning by the skin of his teeth or there's some kind of um, shenanigans with this. The match was thrown out. Yeah, absolutely I, I right. couldn't get in. I couldn't get into it, though. Yeah, absolutely right. And and I didn't think I'd ever say it, but I, I think it's doing more harm now, keeping the title on Eli, and the quicker they can get it off him uh, and rebuild him almost, the better. Uh, get him into a feud that he can look good in, as opposed to being a bit part champion. Because yeah, cause we've talked about it before, he's not being booked as a champion. He, everything about, he, you know, he, he's supposed to be the main guy, and he's in the middle uh, of the show, and just not important in, in the grand scheme of the show. And it's a shame. Um, I, I think all three of them need to go on to do to do something differently. And without talking about spoilers or anything like that, you know, if we didn't know any of the spoilers coming out of the three of them, I think the one who should most probably be carrying it is Alberto. And I didn't think I'd ever say that. He's the one who I think has come out best from this this three man feud. Um, I didn't mind the, the comedy spot with the refs and things like that. 
but it screamed house show to me. It's the kind of thing that you you know if you go and see a, a house show, they have that kind of stuff in there to keep the the fans happy. It shouldn't be a championship match kind of gimmick, uh, and that, that that's what this screamed to me. And and if then if they're treating their their top belt as this kind of caliber and this kind of level then it's just not going to be respected, you know, and, and that, that's why people like, you know, the barbed wire massacre match and this, that feud is because it's been taken seriously and it's been booked well. The, the main of, you know, the, the main championship it hasn't been. Uh, and that's what I have a big problem with this. So I agree with you, Ro. I, I think that the match itself, I thought it was fine, but I think that Eli needs something new to do because this is this not working, this, this, this booking, unfortunately. Well, we got one more week of it, though, because they advertised at Genesis we're going to get the, the same participants, Impact, El Pachon, and Eli Drake defending in uh, Six Sides of Steel. So that that should be interesting, and I'm guessing that's going to blow off the feud amongst these three. Okay, so then we move on to our final uh, match of the night. Uh, well, I say final match of the night, final match on the Impact taping. Anyway, uh, Rosemary versus Casey Spinelli. Um, I, I'm going to open with this one and just give you a, a few thoughts. And I've gone off Rosemary. I don't know why. Uh, I like Casey Spinelli, and it's a shame that she's been booked to lose again. Hopefully she'll get some momentum in the next tapings. But I'm beginning to get a bit fed up with the Rosemary character. I, I don't really understand what it is yet. I, and just even technically, I don't think she's that good a wrestler. And it's becoming more and more apparent each week when you see her now. I think that if they can get the tyre feud back on track, that could be interesting. But at the moment, I'm just not buying into Rosemary. And, and there's nothing there that says to me, I'd like to see a champion again. And uh, this, this match did, once again, did nothing to, to make me think about it. Any thoughts? Um, this match to me was more angle, the post-match angle more than anything. Um, you know, simple... You know, basic match. You could say an extended squash. I know that's a term that's used in wrestling. Um, I'm not worried about Casey Spinelli so much because I know she's only been with the company for a few months. So, you know, I, I think she's fine. The thing that I like, though, with Rosemary, and we talked about this with Sienna or anybody who's champion and they lose the championship, is how they're able to still kind of keep them relevant. And having Rosemary work up and down the card, you know, matches like this, you know, whether they're extended squashes, 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 or whatever the case may be, I think that's good because we need wrestlers like that that aren't just trying to clog up the title picture. Um, this still makes her relevant, and then with the after the after the match, the promo, you know, her setting her sights on the Knockouts Championship and letting Ali know. And LVN know, or, you know, especially specifically Ali, you know, should you win our alliance, it's not going to be anymore. you got something down the road that you can revisit because don't tell me that a Rosemary Alley feud, there, there's money in that. So, and, you know, that's something they can build build towards. But um, the after after the match, the post match, uh, we get the debut of Hanaya the Huntress. I, I and, like uh, this one, girl. I think she's going to be around a long time. <laughs> That's <laughs> and, a joke, and, by the way, and, listeners. <laughs> and, and you know what? If you, for those who don't know, um, you know, check the channel because BQ went into details as far as what happened, but mainly that Hanaya was uh, fired from Impact Wrestling. Like I said, you can uh, check check out his video for more details. So knowing that, I think that was just hard to get behind because it's like on one end, it's like, oh, cool. Let's see where this is going to go. But then, you know, it's only going to go so far because she's no longer with the company. She actually looked quite good, I thought, <laughs> which, is, yeah, which is a man. shame. But, but, you know, they say, man, the pretty ones cause the most problems. So <laughs> is that in wrestling or just life in general? <laughs> Both. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, I was going to say, by the way, next time that you want to, to say, you know, about a wrestler clogging up the main event and constantly hogging the limelight and being in the title picture, we shall refer that as uh, Gail Kimming the place up. OK. Um, <laughs> right. OK. Yeah. So you're quite right. I mean, it was all about the, 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 the final angle, really, wasn't it, with uh, Hanaya? And, and it is a shame that she went because it was a really good debut for, for a wrestler. Um, just a shame that 
uh, you know, it, it's happened. Well, it's played out as it has. And there's been some reports today saying that she's apologised on not apologise on Twitter, but she said it was mutual consent and there's, there's a good relationship there. I don't believe that for a second, but there you go. All right, so, so that pretty much did it for Impact. And then um, we went over to Twitch. Uh, I watched this this morning. Um, I, I don't know how it played in the UK, whether it was live after Impact, which has got a new time over here, or whether it's just going back to the old recording, you know, from when it li aired it live in, in the States. But I watched it this morning and I was actually really impressed. Uh, I wasn't knowing what to expect, but I actually really liked it. And it just shows that you don't always need blood. To, to make a match look brutal. And um, the, the comments that I've seen about this is that uh, there was a, a lack of blood uh, in it. And although there was, it didn't make it look any less painful in any of the spots. Yeah, um, I think wrestling we've seen over the years now, um, you know, a lot of, you know, I'm sure you remember, you know, a lot of us who might have you know, followed ECW and then, you know, some of the other ones where, you know, blood was a big deal. Like even when, when I was looking at the design of the barbed wire of this match, um, you know, compared to some of the other barbed wire matches, I mean, it didn't seem as brutal, but they did this in a creative way. And I'm glad nobody really, you know, it doesn't seem like anyone took it took any major bumps or you know really got hurt i mean there was little you know cuts and bruises and whatnot but they did this well and and i was wondering i was like well why didn't they you know air this on tv it wasn't too bad but like i said i just just in my opinion i think we're seeing wrestling hardcore matches we see very few especially in, in the major promotions you know every so often for a blow to blow off a feud you know we have them but it's not something that we see common even with chair shots i mean i know impact does them sometimes too but you know you don't really see anybody hitting one another in the head they aim for like the shoulder or the back you know really trying to protect wrestlers nowadays but overall this match if this is the final time these guys face each other great way to blow off the feud and this is one of the best feuds Impact has had in some time. So kudos to them. Kudos to LAX, OVE, everybody involved, creative. This I highly recommend anyone who hasn't seen this to go and see this match. Excellent work. I completely agree with everything you said there. I want to pick out a few spots. And funnily enough, you said about headshots there. Um, I noticed Alberto took one in uh, the match uh, from Eli Drake, I think it was. Uh, it was a protected one. He put his hand up. But I did notice that there was a head headshot in that one, which was, uh, it stuck out to me. But going back to this one, there was a few spots in here which I thought were great. And uh, the, the, the move that looked like it hurt the most out of everything, I don't know if you saw the spear that, uh, I can't remember which Chris it is, is it Jake, the, the blonde-haired one, um, where he speared Ortiz uh, through the table at ringside uh, whilst covered in, in the barbed wires. It looked like he landed on his head in that move. Uh, and that was the scariest move of the night and it, you know obviously the impact was supposed to be on Ortiz but it looks like Chris got the uh, the worst of that one I also really like the uh, the skewers in the, in the head and then the suplex over the rope into the into the sorry over the, the the ladder into the tables I thought it was a really good finish to the match I just thought overall everyone involved in this did really really well I thought it was a, a really creative match a lot of uh I was going to say things that looked like it would really, really hurt, and um, yeah, the, the lack of blood didn't didn't matter at all in this. I just thought very, very well done, and a great blow off to the feud. I'd like to see what happens next, uh, because these guys can't keep on feuding. So, so hopefully, in these new tapings and, and next week, there'll be an explanation of of what's next for everyone. I agree. Yep. So that pretty much did it. Oh, I was going to ask you actually about the Twitch experience. Um, what do you think of this? Because um, we didn't have a chance to talk about it last week because we didn't know what was happening. But do you think that, uh, that that's going to be something that they're going to explore a bit more, you know, and try and do, well, I don't know if you can do pay-per-view on Twitch or even do things like one-off batches or, or, or things like this. Do, do you think this is going to be a platform they're going to grow on or do you think they're going to keep it for special occasions? Um, I think they'll use it more so for special occasions. I'm not too sure, but... You know, this was a good opportunity for them and they capitalized on it. I mean, I unfortunately ended up catching it on YouTube because I don't catch Impact when it originally airs. I have to record it because a lot of times I'm away from home. So, you know, I recorded the regular episode and then on YouTube it prompted that it had uh, the full match. 
but as far as the partnership with Twitch, um, I don't know if they uh, – well, obviously Explosion is on the Global Wrestling Network. But I think you could do special matches. I mean, if you want to do things of this caliber that, you know, maybe Pop TV doesn't necessarily agree with, you can have them on Twitch. Um, but it, it, it's interesting. And they've been having content on there. I want to say it's like 24-hour content because I always get notifications that they'll say, you know, going live, um, Impact Wrestling from Twitch. So it was great. And um, it, it worked out well because the ratings this week were were good. They were, they were up. I want to say they got – 309,000 viewership. Don't uh, quote me, but I, I want to say it was around that. Yeah, that was hey, the right but... figure. That's the correct figure, yeah. Okay, so it, it, it seemed like a success, so good good for Impact and, you know, good for Twitch. I, I think they've done a really good job of advertising this barbed wire match, and um, you know that when they have, you know, tapings and you hear about matches that are coming out, this was the one that everyone seemed to be talking about after the Bound for Glory tapings. Uh, this is the one match everyone's saying, you got to see this. And, and I think that sometimes the tapings and knowing about things like this can help. And this is one of those few occasions when it can. Uh, but yeah, it, 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 I think it's been built well. And the storyline, all in all, that there's been two long-running, well, three, I suppose if you count Ali as well, but you've got America's top team, this one, uh, and the Ali storyline that's been building for close on a year. Maybe not quite as long as that, but very, very close. And it's been, it's been really well done. It's been really good, slow build. And I think wrestling misses that these days. And hopefully, whatever direction that the new creative go in, the new management, hopefully they're going to see what has worked and keep those things and then just change the other parts of it. So next week is the final one before the tapings. It almost feels like uh, the night before Christmas Eve, you know, where you've got a week before you get your presents the week after. Uh, so everyone I know is now waiting for the for the new tapings. But we have got one more show. Anything that uh, you think is going to be on there that's going to make you tune in? Well, you're obviously going to tune in because you do these shows with me. Uh, if you don't tune in, you're off. Uh, but is there anything on there that, that stands out next week? Um, just all the... Title matches. I mean, we're getting uh, EC3 versus Seidel. I, I thought we were getting it this episode, so my my bad. We're getting that. We're getting. I, are we getting Ali versus LVN? Um, I'm not I'm not sure. I don't have the card in front of me. And then we're getting the six sides of steel with uh, Eli Drake, uh, El Patron, and Impact. I'm um, I'm really looking forward to the Seidel and EC3 match. Not so much because you know we know what's going to happen with EC3's future. But as far as, you know, this is a feud, another feud that they've been going back and forth. I like that Impact has been taking the time to build some feuds. And then, you know, we see them actually, you know, culminate on the show. So I li- that's one thing that I like what Impact's doing, and I hope they're able to continue doing that moving forward. So, yeah, mainly the, the title matches. It's funny because you talk about, you know, the build-up to that match, and, and that's been you know, built up quite well, whereas the uh, Eli Drake Impact Alberto six side steel match seems to have come out of nowhere. <laughs> you know, so it's interesting, once again, how I think little creative have valued the Eli Drake title run. So uh, hopefully it'll be a good match anyway. But yeah, um, let us know what you thought of this week's show in the comments below. Uh, we can't do this unless you guys keep on subscribing, keep spreading the word. So Even if you listen to this show today and say uh, to to one other person, make sure to subscribe. Please do that. If there's anything else, Ro, or should we just sign off? Yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, Thanks for tuning in, everybody, and uh, catch us next week. All right. And it's goodbye for me as well. Good night.